he did before the sun went down with the news crew and he's in front of a boarded up building and i'm gonna quote to you what he says to this camera crew this news crew he says so people are getting injured and it's our job to protect this business and part of my job is also to help people if there's somebody that's hurt, I'm running into harm's way. That's why I have a rifle, because I can protect myself, obviously. But I also have my med kit. Oh, good. Does he not sound like... It's like Jeez, talking dude. to a third grader and saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? And yeah. he's like, I'm going to do this, because I'll have a rifle, and I'll have a med kit, and yeah. I'm going to run into harm's way. I mean, uh-huh, he lo- It sounds very childish. His age is showing through... Yeah, his age is showing through so hardcore right here. And he keeps saying, it's my job. Bitch, you don't have a... Well, he has like three jobs. Stick to being a fucking janitor. Yeah, you've got no training, dude. No. You just have desire. Well, he went to cadet school. Oh, that's true. And he has some fucking first aid training as a lifeguard. I think they have more than just first aid. You have to get lifeguards certified, but nobody's fucking drowning at this dealership. Chill the fuck out. (laughs) So all of this leads up to when the shooting happens, which is what he's on trial for now. And before I get into the he said, she said of the trial, I'm basically going to tell you what the eyewitnesses said and what I saw from my own eyes from the video, because the shooting, well, two of the shootings are captured on video from that night. Gotcha. So the first video is taken from a high definition drone at 11.45 p.m. Okay. And you can see Kyle running through the parking lot of that car dealership and a couple of people behind him chasing him. And the man that's closest to him throws a plastic bag but misses him, like throws a plastic bag at him. Uh, Wow. Like a a Kroger bag. What the fuck? I know, and misses him. And you find out later that in the bag it has like socks, underwear, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant. Oh, so I thought it was just an empty plastic bag No, I mean, to throw. Well, it's not very heavy. Yeah. So he throws that at him as he's running. But then some random bystander shoots up into the air. And I don't know if this is what prompts Kyle to turn around, like, oh shit, they're shooting at me, or oh shit, someone's like... Maybe that's fucking Dominic on the roof picking people off. Someone's shooting. I need to get involved. Right. But the second you hear that shot in the background, Kyle turns around and that guy that's closest to chasing him was actually Joseph Rosenbaum. And he's a 36-year-old dude. And he's now probably three feet from him. Mm -hmm. And Kyle fires a shot with his AR. The first shot goes into his groin area where it immediately fractures his pelvis and drops Rosenbaum to the ground. Fuck yeah, it would. Then he is shot in the hand and in the thigh. But the last and final shot occurred when Rosenbaum was turning away from Kyle and Kyle shot him in the back. That shot perforated his heart, his aorta, his pulmonary artery, and his right lung. Damn it. Yeah. Well, when this happened, a reporter named Richie McGinnis, who witnessed the entire confrontation and everything, he immediately starts administering first aid to Rosenbaum, like trying to stop the bleeding and giving him CPR. And he said the whole time he's doing that, Kyle was standing over them and he gets on this phone, makes a phone call and McGinnis overhears Kyle say, I just killed somebody. And he's like kind of panicky. Then he just takes off running. The next video is taken right after this incident. Okay. Kyle is running down the middle of a street, and there are people kind of scattered everywhere, like littered everywhere, that were either watching the protest or part of the protest. Uh They're going all different directions. But he's running with his AR rifle in hand, jogging down the middle of the street. And there's a handful of people chasing after him, yelling, like, get that dude, stop that guy. Yeah. And people are going, what do you do? And they're saying he shot somebody. So then more people kind of start chasing. Yes, chasing after him. And this whole what I'm about to explain was caught not just by there is a photographer there documenting the entire protest, but it was also caught by multiple cell phones from different angles. So he's running down the street, multiple people chasing him. And some guy in a white shirt runs up behind him, like catches up to him and takes a wild swing at the back of his head. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know if it lands, because both of them are, like, mid-stride running. Yeah. But it kind of looks like it lands, because uh, Kyle ducks his head and his hat comes off. It's a glancing blow. Right, but he doesn't skip a beat. He keeps running, so it wasn't, like, a devastating punch. And the guy in the white shirt that hits him kind of goes off to the side. He keeps jogging a little bit more and falls to the ground. He trips and falls himself, Kyle. Just like in the movies. What movies? 
Well, someone's always running from somebody or something, and then they always trip and fall. Yes, just like the movies. Well, immediately, the second he hits the ground, all these people that are running have caught up to him. They swarm him. Well, yes and no. They're kind of all running up at the same time, and one guy runs up and basically goes to, like, kick him hardcore. Uh Uh-huh. And he does kick him, but at the exact same time, Kyle is, he's sitting on the ground. He's sitting up now. He's not laying down. He gets his hands on his rifle and shoots a shot the second that guy lands that kick. So the guy runs off. He's not shot. Nobody's oh, okay. hit. Nobody's hit by this round. Oh, the guy that kicks him runs off. He shoots again. Nobody's hit by it. Then another man named Anthony Hu- Huber, H-U-B-E-R, Huber, Huber, Hubber, Hubber. I'm going to go with Hubber. Anthony Hubber runs up, and this is seconds after he let off those two rounds uh-huh. of being kicked in the head, and has a skateboard. Oh, shit. He hits him in the shoulder with the skateboard, and then immediately tries to grab the gun. Right as he grabs the gun, Kyle fires again and hits Anthony Hubber in the chest. Mm. That shot perforated Hubber's heart, right lung, and killed him almost instantly. Damn. Then a 26-year-old man named Gage Grosskreutz runs up to Kyle, basically the same time as Anthony Hubber. Mm-hmm. Hubber is throwing me. <laughs> it's probably not Hubber. <laughs> it's probably not Huber. You know what would have been nice is if I actually fucking listened to somebody else say it, and mm-hmm. then I would know how to yeah. say it. So I apologize. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this guy named Gage runs up just as Anthony is getting shot, like at the almost exact same moment. And when he sees Anthony get shot, he puts his hands up for a second. Yeah. But then he sees Kyle have his hand, his rifle then turned at him. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he goes to reach for a gun that he has. Oh, shit. And gets shot by Kyle. Damn. Well, this thankfully did not kill him, but it blew off his right bicep. Ooh. Like 90% of his right bicep was taken off by this shot. He drops to the ground And then all of a sudden, Kyle gets up very nonchalantly and just turns around and starts walking away from the scene. Hey, LED guys. Everyone else that was chasing him is now backed off because he's shooting people. Mm -hmm. As soon as he starts to walk away, people are running up to the injured, trying to administer first aid. And he starts walking calmly down the street. He gets a little bit away and starts jogging and sees police lights at the end of the street coming towards him. Uh So he puts both hands up in the air, walking in the middle of the street. And they're not police cars. They're almost like SWAT vans. You know what I'm talking about? Like they're armored vehicles of some sort. Yes. There's like three of them. They're coming down the street and he's putting his arms up and everyone is screaming in the background. Like he did it. He shot him. But those people, they're just honking at him to get out of the fucking way. Right. I remember that. And they go right around him. After that, he ends up going home where he tells his mom everything that happened. And she says, you basically have two choices, turn yourself in or leave town. And he decides he wants to turn himself in. So they both drive to the police station where they waited two hours in the waiting room before being seen. I get that the police had a lot going on. But you've got a killer right here. Yes. Two hours where it's reported that Kyle spent that time vomiting and crying in the waiting room. And that does soften my heart a little bit because he's only fucking 17. Yeah. And now the gravity of the situation is hitting him. His adrenaline, adrenaline is gone. Yep. Yeah. He knows that he just fucking killed people. And I, it's hard. I don't know. This whole case is so it's, – it's such a gray area for me because I do see him as a little lost boy. Yeah. But he also fucking went there armed and shot people. But then, just as I'm starting to feel sorry for him, it's reported that the police finally come to him and they say, hey, this is all quoted, hey, I gotta read this form to you, and he responds, is it Miranda? I know how Miranda works. Oh, cool guy. And then he says, I want a lawyer, but then continued to talk before his lawyer got there. So do you do you know how Miranda, works. Miranda rights work? He's an idiot. Yeah. He's 17. Of course he's an idiot. I've yet to meet a 17-year-old that's not a fucking idiot. (laughs) So as he's being interviewed by police, Wendy, his mom, starts Uh to get death threats on her phone. Like, your kid's a fucking white supremacist. We know where you fucking live. Because all those 
all the cell phone footage has now gone viral and Mm -hmm. people in the comments are pointing out i know that kid this is his name blah 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 and she's like holy shit like this is bad we cannot go home regardless of what happens in this police station we cannot go home the police say guess why he's not going home he's fucking under arrest and she's like what (laughs) which i think is crazy and the first thing he says to police officers is can you guys delete my social media accounts the fuck dude that right there is pretty telling to me Uh uh-huh because either he's thinking oh shit i'm on there talking about police a lot showing off my guns a lot Uh like this paints a bad picture for me yeah or he's thinking i don't want my friends and family to like know that's you know what i mean like i don't want to be tagged in anything or people yeah i don't know what his train of thought there was his priorities are a little skewed yeah so kyle was charged with first degree intentional homicide reckless homicide and underage possession of a dangerous weapon and quickly these shootings like i said became very political with the left saying that he should have never been there with a gun to begin with Mm mm-hmm And he should be held accountable for murder and the right basically saying that he was defending himself and it was the protesters' fault for provoking him. Mm -hmm. Republicans were calling him a political prisoner. Yeah. Which I think is pretty crazy. And they immediately started raising money for his $2 million bail. That's high. (laughs) Which they made. Oh, wow. There was a Christian fundraising site that got a lot of money for him. Then the founder of My Pillow, which I've never even heard of. Oh yeah. You know what My Pillow is? Yeah, I've seen the commercials. Well, he donated money to get Kyle out. And then the actor Ricky Schroeder. I don't know actors' names. I should have says. looked up what he was in before. Yeah, shoddy research. Sorry about that. He was a little boy actor way back like in the 80s. I say way back. He was in Lonesome Dove. He's now in NYPD Blue. Here, I'll show you a picture of him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, he donated $150,000. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not know that he ha- still had it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess in my BD Blue is good. Yeah. But I think, I felt like he was on Little House on the Prairie, but I don't know. You That's, said Lonesome Dove. Yeah, but he reminds me of one of those kids in, like, he's wearing, like, brown overalls and a long white button-up shirt. I don't know why. It doesn't matter. Then the attorney that they hired right off the bat also creates the Fight Back Foundation, which was a fund set up for people to donate to Kyle's legal defense Mm -hmm. after they had made his bail. So Kyle was released and driven to a safe house that he and his family were going to stay at because, of course, everyone knows where he lives and people are pissed that was paid for by this fund. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Well, this does not sit well with people because he's a suspected murderer Uh and he gets free bail, free representation, a free safe house, and security. Yeah, that's fucked up. Not only that, but this fucking safe house was furnished. They all had brand new name brand clothing because they didn't have time to get shit from their house, Uh including Lululemon. That's fucking expensive and a terrible company. Go back and listen to that episode if you haven't listened to it. Yeah. Terrible company. And it was Wendy and all three kids. Like. Oh, geez. Just bring them all. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody was staying at this furnished house. They had gaming systems there and all four of them got a brand new laptop because they wanted the kids, including Faith, the oldest sister. Mm Mm-hmm. To enroll in high school because she dropped out as well and she's 20, but they wanted all of them to go back and finish high school, maybe to look good or I don't know why, but they all got brand new computers to do that. Well, that, again, people don't fucking like that Uh -uh. because not a lot of suspected murderers get this kind of bullshit. Not only that, but when they made it to the safe house, fucking Ricky Schroeder was there for a goddamn photo op. Jeez. Right? It's fucking weird. Bad taste. And not only that, but the security guard that transferred Kyle from the uh, police department whenever he got bailed out uh-huh. to the safe house had stopped and bought him clothes. And one of them was like Rifle Coffee Company. I didn't write this down, but it's like two rifles that make an X with like a, uh-huh. I think a skull crossbones type situation with rifles. And that's what he was wearing in this photo op with Ricky Schroeder. Too fucking soon, dude. Yeah. 
Well, then the family starts having issues with their lawyer, John Pierce, the one that did all that crowdsourcing to Mm -hmm. make them money, because this is all while they're awaiting trial, obviously. But this guy, this lawyer, John Pierce, starts drinking in front of them, like in the middle of the day, is just like fucking pouring him drinks. Okay. 